Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, I thought today would be a really fun chance to kind of step outside the box in terms of the videos that we normally make. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about support gear. I know that, you know, we make a lot of gun videos and we do a lot of shooting videos. And our, our videos do encompass a lot of different topics and things like that. I know we do a lot of political stuff. We've got our gun gripe series. We got our top five guns, which is kind of fun. We haven't done a meltdown in a while, but we do our meltdown videos. But I know we don't really talk about gear a heck of a lot. So I thought that this would be a fun opportunity uh, for to me to expand on some of the support gear uh, that I use and, and that I think is pretty critical. And uh, we'll go over what, what this is. What is support gear? What is it used for? Uh, what should you consider when it comes to your support gear needs? Uh, that's what we want to try to dive into in today's video. Before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Sonoran Desert Institute for supporting our videos. If you're looking for a career in gunsmithing, they have some awesome programs that you are absolutely going to love. They got some great instructors, great curriculum, and they have some good drone programs as well. Also, their reloading programs are fantastic. You can learn how to reload, fly drones, work on guns. So if you're looking for a career in the firearms industry, definitely look at Sonoran Desert Institute. Great group of people. Big thanks to them for supporting our efforts and uh, allowing us to continue doing what we do uh, for the internet community at large. So big thanks to SDI for supporting us and just tell them we sent you. All right, so what is support gear? When we, when we talk about support gear, well, anybody can have a rifle, a pistol, a shotgun, or other type of arm, uh, and anyone can take that arm and walk around with it or carry it around in the field or whatever, but what about your magazines? What about, you know, all of the other things that you need to have with you? You need to have additional magazines. You need to have medical supplies. You need to have, um, you know, maybe some water on you, uh, communications equipment, uh, tools, things like that. Um, so if you are using a firearm, let's just say in a dynamic environment, and uh, you need to be able to carry your magazines and other accoutrements uh, into that particular uh, situation. And there's a lot of different gear out there. Um, you know, a lot of people will, will just go to like a surplus store and just buy some old surplus, you know, military gear. And, and that's fine. Uh, that totally does the trick. And, and many of us, when we're just getting started into, let's just say, doing a bit of training and doing a little bit of, you know, tactical movement and maybe trying to employ more tactics into our gun handling that involve changing magazines, moving around, um, you know, or maybe communication tactics between you and other parties and individual movement tactics and things. Um, those are important, but you have to be able to carry uh, your uh, accessories and things on your person. And that's when we say support gear, uh, that's what we mean. And there are things in this video I'm going to show that I use in my everyday life that may not even necessarily be related to guns uh, as well, okay? And look, don't get pigeonholed either into thinking that support gear has to deal only with firearms. Like, there's a, there's a lot of people that use support gear. I mean, think about it. Your firemen, they have to be able to, you know, have all of their gear on them, all of their support gear to be able to do their job. Uh, a policeman has certain uh, needs that they're going to have for support gear because they got to be able to have radios and handcuffs and all of that other type of stuff. A soldier is going to need certain types of gear because he's got to be able to dynamically react to a combat environment and to go out and destroy the enemy and be able to carry enough ammo to do all of that. So, And the medical requirements might be a bit different for an infantry soldier who needs to obviously be well equipped to handle a pretty nasty boo-boo, if you will. So... Support needs are going to vary. I mean, look, uh, support gear, also hiking and climbing and fishing and camping and hunting and all sorts of reasons that you're going to need support gear to carry your things into the field. That's what this is having to do with. Now, I could make this a long video, but I'm going to try to just focus on some basic ideas in terms of how we view support gear. And maybe this will help some of you. You've got to be able to carry water. So there's a few different ways you can carry your water. Um, I prefer these Camelbacks. Um, this one's empty, of course, but it's basically just a bladder that you fill up full of water. And you've got a drinking tube, okay, like this. And it's got a little lever on it. You can open it and close it. And you just suck on this little guy here and you get your water out of there. I like Camelbacks because you can quickly take them off and fill them up really easy. Um, they do 
just sit on your back. You can also attach these directly to your gear. So let's say you have a three day pack or something. You want to put the camel back on the outside of the pack. You can do that. But I like this one. Uh, this is one of the smallest camelbacks. They do make various um, capacities of camelbacks. But this is a great piece of gear for carrying your water around. Okay, And this is good whether you're on your boat or out hunting. I mean, there's a bunch of different environments where you need to be able to drink water. Um, sometimes a water bottle isn't practical. Water bottles crink, crinkle and make noise. You might be in an environment where you don't want to make a lot of noise. Camelbacks are quiet. Uh, you can hear the water sloshing around in there a little bit when you run, but it's not like super loud, you know. So there may be tactical considerations for why you don't want to have a loud water bottle or have to deal with water bottles. But I just find it as being a very convenient way to carry water in the field. Of course, it has a carry handle. Um, so you could fill a bunch of these up and just have them hanging in a tree or something on standby in case you need extras. So something to consider. So a way to carry water. I do like uh, traditional military canteens as well. Um, they are useful. You can just take a cap of bleach. So like if you buy a military canteen from the surplus store and you're like, man, I don't know if a, someone's spit in this thing or it's nasty or whatever, just take a cap full of bleach and rinse it out with some good hot water and a little bleach and let it dry out real good. Rinse it out a few times. It'll be okay. So those are good. All right. What about carrying mags? Um, now there's a lot of different things that we could get into in terms of how you're going to carry magazines in the field, but on support gear, I'm partial to the chest rigs. I like chest rigs because they're generous in the capacity. I've actually got one right here. Okay. Now, this chest rig right here, you notice, is not designed to carry armor. Okay. Um, there's a couple of different schools of thought. So you can have a plate carrier that you can put plates in to give yourself a lot better mode of protection. Or you can go with something like a chest rig that, you know, maybe is, is what we call a slick chest rig with no armor. So now you're cutting that weight down where you can move around faster. You can be a little bit more limb, limb, limber on your feet and everything like that. I'm partial to these old school Black Hawk chess rigs. Uh, these are from like the 90s. They're really early ones. And they've got this heavy um, sort of neoprene backing on them. And they have four magazine pouches on them that hold two magazines. So this is eight mags. And you've got plenty of space on the side pockets for your blowout kits and tourniquets and any other type of thing that you might want to have on your person. Um, I'm partial to these types of chest rigs just because I can move around faster. And um, I'm not saying that someone shouldn't have armor. Um, that's a whole nother uh, topic. I think I'll probably cover armor in its own video and I'll go over a bunch of different carriers and different armor sizes and some of the pluses and minuses of having an armored carrier versus an un unarmored carrier. But one of the glaring reasons why I probably would, would grab a chest rig over the armor is mainly just because I want to be fast and I want to be able to move around a lot quicker. And the nice thing about a chest rig is you can jettison it and take it off a lot easier than taking off a set of armor. I mean, sometimes armor can be a whole chore to take on and, and off. Um, I like the idea of being able to drop the rig if I need to or get rid of it if I need to. And it's easy enough. It's just mags, so I can plus it up as needed. Um, it's just a very useful way to carry a lot of magazines. And the way that it rests on your shoulders with the straps, you know, you do have a pair of straps that are really well padded. And it also snaps in the back around your waist with a rear um, waist pad. And that is just a great piece of gear. And... Um, I like these. They're great. Now, what about 30 cal mags? Um, look, you know, you can go old school. Uh, I have a Scar Heavy, and I, I, I like it a lot. I think it's a great gun. But again, um, going off of, you know, maybe not having a carrier with armor and everything, and I want to just run just magazines, like what I call a walking around setup. Walking around. You know, chest rig, magazines, water. We're going to go have a walk. We're going to go look around. We're going to go a patrol or something like that, right? We're not necessarily looking for trouble, but if we run into trouble, we got a lot of mags that we can, we can break contact and get away. That's kind of the idea, okay? I mean, like in Ukraine where you got soldiers in the trenches and stuff every single day and, you know, there's no telling what kind of death lies around the next corner. Obviously, a carrier with some armor is probably a welcome thing to be able to protect yourself from small arms fire. 
I'm talking about more of a patrol situation, reconnaissance, looking around, or an operation that requires you to be fast and, you know, quick on your feet and be able to get in and out quickly. All right. I like the old school FAL um, chest rigs. These are great. Um, they're just made out of this heavy webbing, almost like the old school British stuff that you saw from World War II. But you can see that even though this is designed for an FAL, I've got my SCAR magazines in here. And uh, I think this is a great piece of gear. It's light, it's handy, it's effective. And I like how, um, I like how large the physical size of the belt is. It's very wide and large, and it's actually a really solid piece of gear. And because everything is just this webbing, it's quiet. There's nothing to, like, rattle around. There's no buckles to rattle. There's no loops or, you know, like Al Alice gear can be a little loud because all the clips and the metal contact and everything. I like these old school FAL uh, rigs because they're, one, they're inexpensive, Two, it's a great little piece of gear for just, like I said, walking around and just checking stuff. But, you know, it's still a great piece of gear that has stood up to the test of time. And uh, I guess the reason I wanted to show this particular piece of gear is because I want to reiterate the fact to you that a good piece of gear doesn't have to cost a lot of money to be effective and to, and to do the job. And this is a fantastic piece of gear. And the cool thing about it, it'll work with just about any 30 cal mag. So SCAR mags, FAO mags, M14 mags, you're pretty much covered with that type of a piece of gear. So just want to kind of show that off quickly. All right. I've got gear all around me. Okay, this is one of my absolute favorite pieces of gear that I want to share with you. And this is the Hill People Gear Tip Pouch. Now, these are available in a lot of different configurations. This one is a slick front. But they do make ones that have molly attachments on the outside for all of your gear. Uh, this is one of my uh, most used piece of hunting gear in my arsenal. Okay, I can keep my grunt in here. I got my LPO uh, thermal. Uh, yeah, this is a thermal tracker from uh, from Loophole just to find like down deer and stuff. I got my wind bottle, and then this this goes on your chest. Okay. It, um, look, I'll put it on real quick. Right, just fish these through like this. This goes on your chest. You can tighten these up a little bit. That actually needs to be turned around. Right. Now this is, this is actually set up to be a little loose because I normally wear this over really heavy clothing. Right, so I'll have my, my jacket on. I'll be layered up. Right now I'm just in a t-shirt, so it, it's, you know, it's kind of, kind of big on me. But, this is great because what I like to use this for when I'm out hunting is yeah, I can put my cell phone, my wallet, my keys, any other type of crap, and it gets everything off your waist. You know what I mean? Like if you're climbing in and out of deer stands, you're, you're crawling around in fields looking for hogs, you're, you're sneaking around. Like having this chest pouch is a super handy thing uh, that I find myself using a freakish amount. Like I use this thing all the time. You can keep your range cards in here. Or maybe you got your sniper log book or something or any type of a range log book that you need to have. Like you got room for your books and pens and accoutrements and things. And this is probably one of the best pieces of gear that Hill People sells. Um, I highly recommend them. I think it's a great piece of gear. And I find myself using it all the time. Like I cannot, you know, I cannot stress how great this piece of gear is. Let me, um, let me take it off here. Take my hat off for a minute. Okay. So that's the Hill People tip pouch. But if you just look them up, they're on there. And they come in a lot of different configurations. Okay. You've also got some additional storage on the bottom, these little loops. Um, I've seen a lot of people fish, um, like, tourniquets and things in there. Like, when you're out hunting, you never know if there's an accident that might come your way or whatever. Um, having a tourniquet on your person is probably important. These things are expandable. Um, Hill People in general, as a company, highly recommended. Th these guys make fantastic gear. Um, I, I use this fishing as well when I'm out on my boat. Um, I'll have my tip pouch, have my phone, everything off my, and it's off my waist. So if I need to wade a little bit, I can wade up into some pretty decent water and still have my phone and keys and wallet and all of my junk 
way up out of the water on my chest. So that's another benefit of having the tip pouch. Again, support gear doesn't necessarily have to be just for the firearm directly, but it might be for some of your other things that you're having on your person. These are also handy for hiking and things like that as well. So highly recommend the tip pouch there um, from Hill People. Fantastic piece of gear. Um, let's look at battle belts. All right, so this is another sort of, let's just say, ideology when it comes to support gear um, that has really been, you know, gaining in popularity over the years, and that's uh, an idea called the battle belt. I'm going to take this camel back and move it. All right, and I had this sitting up here. I'm going to show you the battle belt too, but also the Otis pull-through clean kits. Um, any of you guys that served back in the day uh, over the last 20 years, you, you've seen these kits. And uh, this is a great compact cleaning kit that you can put on your gear. So if you've got some, um, you know, molly or something or, or a backpack with some molly attachments, you can pretty much put this thing just about anywhere. And that way you've always got a nice, small, compact cleaning kit that stays on your support gear. Um, just wanted to kind of mention that. I actually don't have this mounted on something right now. I have them on some of my other packs and stuff, but this is just a spare that I had in the shop here I wanted to show you. But um, Otis Technologies makes these boar snake cleaning kits. Definitely a great piece. Um, that I highly recommend. All right, let's look at the battle belt. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to take this pistol out. This is my SIG M17, and this one has the uh, Wilson Combat frame module and everything like that. Great piece of gear. I'm going to go ahead and just take my pistol out of the holster just to make this thing easier to deal with. All right, so this is a Cobra buckle um, for the actual belt section this inner belt is from blue alpha gear and it uses a cobra belt, uh, belt buckle and it slips into this so so basically the way this battle belt is set up is to be a grab and go option uh, the whole point of a battle belt let me hold it up the whole point of a battle belt is for you to have all your gear okay set up on a belt that you can grab and go and have a general amount of capability at your disposal just by simply grabbing your belt and putting it on. The battle belts are designed to go over your existing belt. So let's say you're sitting around minding your own business and you've got your pants on, your belt on, your, your shoes, and you're, you're just doing your thing and something kicks off and you need to go respond to the situation. The battle belt allows you to make sure that you have your handgun, all right, so you can see we've got a holster here on the end. Um, this particular holster is from Alien Gear. Okay, now this inner belt slides through this, this uh, sleeve right here that actually has all of our Molly gear on it. That is from Viking Tactics, and that was designed by Mr. Kyle Lamb. I'm going to show you this. Here's the inside of it. You can see that it's padded, okay? So it's really well padded, and this is designed to just go over your existing belt and kind of rides on your hips. And of course, you have to adjust it out for each person, but I'm going to go through and talk about some of the gear um, that I've got on this belt and why. Okay, so obviously my Alien Gear um, holster there that's set up for my SIG M17. I'm just going to set it out to the side so it's not flopping around. Then going around the back, we've got, um, this is a set of the Leatherman med shears that fold. And the cool thing about these is they fold up nice and compact, but I've got an awesome set of med shears in case I need to cut some clothing off. And boy, would that be a bad situation if that's something that we had to do. But we have to be uh, ready to do that if we need to. All right, what did I do wrong here? There we go. Okay, so that folds up and just clips right back in there. Like this. Okay. All right, and then moving around, sorry about that. I'm trying to maneuver all this and talk to. We've got, this is just a um, U.S. military issue tourniquet, uh, tourniquet pouch. And these are Cat 7 tourniquets that I've got staged up on this side of the belt on the right side. I've also got one on the left side. My area of thinking there, the reason I carry two tourniquets is because, for one, if one of my arms is out of commission, I need to be able to grab a tourniquet from either side. That just seems like a logical thing to me. And two, the other reason is I may need more than one tourniquet. Or what if I need to use a tourniquet on someone or more than one person? So, look, 
two is one and one is none, as they say. So I carry two Cat 7, uh, the Generation 7 Cat tourniquets. And I got those through uh, North American Rescue. All right, on the back, a uh, full blowout kit with an additional tourniquet in there. Um, there's a variety of different um, stuff in here, everything from uh, gauze and um, you know different ace bandages and things like that. There's a, a, a neopharyngeal airway tube in there. Um, there's um, yeah, it's it's a full blowout kit. There's a chest seal in there. Um, there's a whole bunch of gauze. I think I've I've got a whole bunch of crap in there, but I keep that that blowout kit on the back of my belt because medical is important. And of course, there's a whole bunch of like boo boo components in there too, band aids and you know little sutures and things like all all sorts of random uh, boo boo uh, stuff as well, which you know you might run into from time to time. And then going on back around again, there's the second tourniquet uh, that we talked about earlier. This is my Leatherman um, Model 400 Super Tool. Um, I think this is the Model 400. Yeah, the Super Tool Model 300. You can't go wrong with a Leatherman. This is a great piece of gear. You, you, you never know when you need to have the ability to have a multi-tool on you. And uh, the pouch that this multi-tool is in is actually not a Leatherman product. This is uh, made by a company called Tactical Tailor, okay, that made this Leatherman pouch. But it's really more of a general purpose pouch. It can be used for anything. I just happen to put my multi-tool in it. I don't know if they market it as a multi-tool pouch, but that's what I use it for. All right, again, here's another um, product from uh, Tactical Tailor as well. This is one of the most awesome mag pouches you could ever ask for. I love it. Um, it actually holds two AR mags or basically two rifle mags, but then also two pistol mags. There's neodymium magnets in here, okay, that just put a good bit of grip on there to keep it in there. So it's, it's great. It holds your pistol mags in place. Right, so I've got two extra mags for my SIG, and then I've got two P mags set up here, okay, with some M855A1 in them, and I'm running the Terran Tactical five round extension plates. So my thinking on this is all right, if I have to grab my battle belt and put it on and run out the door with my rifle, I know that I have um, two extra mags. And I have uh, 10 extra rounds by having the, the Terran Tactical extensions on the bottom. So if I'm only going to carry two spare mags just to go, you know, investigate an issue, I know I've got a little bit of extra firepower. Um, so I do like the Terran Tactical extensions for that reason. And my house gun, uh, my house rifle stays, uh, it has a magazine in the gun that has the Terran Tactical extension on it as well just to give me that those couple of extra rounds so if i have extensions on three of my mags over the course of three mags i actually give myself an extra 15 rounds taking up almost no more room that's kind of the idea but the battle belt concept is great um kyle lamb uh, in viking tactics he does make a set of suspenders for this particular rig i experimented with suspenders and i found that i didn't really need suspenders for this particular weight load but if you were increasing the weight and getting really crazy i could see where having the suspenders would be a very important thing to have um, for my purposes and for what i use this for i don't worry about having suspenders all right let's talk about one other piece of support gear and then we're going to let you guys get back to your day uh, the reason i'm showing you this gear is because this is this is stuff that i use it's all stuff that I train with, I use, you know, I trust it, I vetted it. And it's important to remember that, you know, just because you settle in on a piece of support gear, it doesn't mean that you can't also learn more as you go and make rolling changes to your gear setup as you go. Totally nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, you can totally do that. So don't rest on your laurels, you know. Always try to figure out something that works a little bit better. Maybe it's a little bit quieter. You know, maybe it weighs a little less. You know, maybe it's just a better tool for the job. It's okay to experiment with gear. Um, we're going to talk about another piece of support gear that I think a lot of people overlook, and that's tripods, okay? Um, a lot of people will put a bipod on their rifle, and that's fine. Like, I have a bipod on a ton of my rifles. I mean, mo most of my Life and Liberty guns have bipods on them because it is convenient to be able to lay in the prone and get behind a bipod if you need to engage something with a rifle. It just helps to steady the gun up for sure. But you're going to find yourself in a lot of situations 
where you are going to need to be able to shoot over barriers and you're going to need to be able to shoot over tall structures and things like that. And very rarely are you actually going to be able to lay in the prone and shoot at something, especially in the field. You know, you got some thick brush that's three or four feet tall or something. You may have to get the gun up over that brush. Now, I don't have my main tripod here with me to show you. This is one of my silkies, which is just kind of a cheaper tripod. But <clears throat> the hog saddle, uh, this is a great piece of gear. Um, this piece of gear screws into the, into the head of a camera tripod. And you can, you can tighten this up on your rifle and hold your rifle in place and use it as a giant tripod. Basically, you're turning a camera tripod into a rifle tripod. And if you combine this with an articulating head, um, I have a Manfrotto camera tripod that's um, carbon fiber. It's actually my truck. I was just too lazy to go get it, so I just grabbed this one. We use these in the studio as well to hold cameras. So we'll have the camera plate, and we'll actually push put the camera plate in the hog saddle okay, uh, in order to, to hold our cameras as well. So we not only use these actual camera tripods for cameras, but then we also use the hog saddle for its intended purpose, and that is supporting rifles. And we have shot a ton of animals off of hog saddles in hunting situations. Now you can imagine in a two-way range, uh, in a two-legged game situation, having this would be a very handy thing to have, especially with the carbon fiber tripod. You can keep the weight down. You can attach it to the side of your pack. Of course, your pack is going to begin to get heavier as you add more gear, but I feel like a tripod, like a carbon fiber tripod with a hog saddle is a very crucial piece of gear for a rifleman. That's just me. But I wanted to share that because I thought that was something that a lot of people tend to overlook. And this is just one of my silk tripods. Um, I prefer the Manfrotto's for field work because they weigh a lot less. And the ball head adapter for the Manfrotto is an essential piece of gear. You take your hog saddle, put it in the top of the, of the pan head, and man, just like running a camera, you can, you can maneuver that gun precisely any way you need to do it. So that's another form of support gear that maybe people don't think about. I'm going to do a video where we'll probably talk about armor in a little bit more detail um, holistically. Like I'll do a whole video about armor and carriers and things like that. I just wanted this to be some of the support gear that I use on a regular basis. Um, I know that, you know, some folks have been asking me about this particular, you know, concept. And I wanted to share with you some of the gear that I think is very useful. And luckily, a lot of the stuff I showed you is not terribly expensive. Um, I would say probably the most expensive thing is the battle belt. Um, by the time you start adding a, a nice inner belt and then the outer belt and then all of your, your gadgets and accessories and things like that, a, a battle belt can quickly get expensive. But I feel that in a situation where there's, let's just say, a, a, a very relative unknown, but let's say that, I don't know, a bump in the night and you just need to go investigate, or, you know, maybe you want to travel and have, you know, something in your car that kind of is a ready rig. A battle belt is great because you have your handgun on standby. Okay, you have your rifle locked up somewhere in your vehicle. You've got a rifle, you've got a belt, a pistol, two extra pistol magazines, two extra rifle magazines, and medical, all in one convenient location. It just, to me, I feel like the battle belt concept in terms of the everyday man philosophy uh, for readiness is an extremely important thing to have. If you can't get out of trouble with that, you, you might need to find a better rifle or, or, or go grab you. <laughs> you. You might want to go get some different gear, but... Uh, I, I think that a majority of situations that your average person can find themselves in on this continent anyway, uh, a, a well-equipped battle belt is, is probably going to get you just about out of any bad situation you ever find yourself in, uh, for sure. Um, I like them a lot. If I was going to carry a lot of rifle mags, again, the, the Black Hawk chest rig, great piece of gear, and shh, don't tell anybody, they're cheap. You can go on eBay and get them for like 75 bucks. But I bet after this video goes up, they're probably going to be like 300 bucks or some stupid crap like that. So I'm probably putting my foot in my mouth. Maybe I should go and buy them all now before you guys see this video. But anyway, I digress. I hope you enjoyed today's video concept. And thank you so much for tuning in. And um, I wanted to just kind of chat about some of my favorite support gear. Have yourselves a great day. Many more videos on the way. Again, big thanks to SDI for supporting our efforts. You guys are awesome. Many more on the way. Make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so that you get all of our videos. We'll see you on the flip side. Have a good one.